Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm All Things Wrestling, and today I'm going to be reviewing WWE Friday Night SmackDown, 20th of December 2019. We kick off the show with Daniel Bryan making his way to the ring. He said, For the last few weeks, people have been asking what happened to me and why did I go? He said, I don't know. I felt the fiend viscously rip the beard and hair. Uh, and then when I came to, I got cleaned up. I didn't notice the bit of hair. I noticed what was missing, the Daniel Bryan brand. He said he saw his daughter and it was the first time she saw him without facial hair and long hair. She cried and she was scared. It looks like she didn't know him. If it, She only knew Daniel Bryan, the brand. Daniel said he did recognise the man who never made a vent at WrestleMania. He was never given a chance and had to claw for everything. That is the man who came to TLC and kicked Bray Wyatt's ass. Bray likes to talk about changing people. Bray succeeded. Daniel said he will change Bray. Bray has trained himself to not feel pain. Daniel tells Bray to come out so he can prove him wrong. The Miz then makes his way out. Uh, Miz is like, what happened to you was awful, but Bray attacked his family. You don't know what it's like to have him in your house and put a doll in your two-year-old crib. He said, it's not about winning on Sunday. It was about his family. Bray only has... A family in his fantasy world. All he has is his title and he'll be taking the title from Bray. Then Corbin came down and insulted their families. And mentioned about being at Angle and winning King of the Ring and being Roman Reigns. Your failures as a father. Uh, then Miz and Daniel Bryan attack him. Ziggler attacks from behind. Baron with End of Days. And then they're sent off for our main event. Uh, overall, promo started very strong and then Baron came out. <laughs> To be honest, I'm going to give it a nice solid 7 out of 10 because the Brian and Miz work was really, really, really good. Um, we then go to Heavy Machinery. They asked about their confidence after losing last week. Tucker said Otis feels feelings were hurt last week when Cesaro threw the ham down. Otis said he was enjoying giving out ham a mouthful of joy. Tucker said Otis' heart was the only vulnerable part in his body. They're going to win and spread holiday joy. Mandy Rose shows up and said, I had you at Secret Santa. I've got you a present. She gives him ham and then gives him a kiss on the cheek. You know what? It was sweet. It was nice. It was funny. It's going to get a 6.5 out of 10. Quite actually entertaining. We have Heavy Machinery featuring ham uh, versus the revival in a Miracle on 34th Street fight. Um... Yeah, it was a typical straight fight. Otis's ham got destroyed at one point. Um, Otis uh, hits Caterpillar with an elbow drop and then Compactor for the three count. Tucker then brings the ham, gives Otis the ham. <laughs> Just funny. Uh, the match, alright. I'm going to give it a 2.75 out of 5. Fairly entertaining match, actually, for a SmackDown anyway. Uh, then. We have Dana Brooke with Alexa Bliss, Nikki Cross, Lacey Evans, and Lacey's daughter stopping by to wish her luck because Dana's having a match against Bailey. Not really going to rate that, but nice anyway. Then Otis is walking with his ham. He sees Mandy and Sonya talking. Sonya says she has a match, so she leaves. Otis apologizes for what happened to the ham, and Mandy says it's alright, and she gives him a hug. So, yeah, that was a nice touching moment there. Uh, then the revival are in the ring. They complain about the garbage around the ring, not the crowd. Dash asks about their legacy. Each week it's a different gimmick and joke at their expense. Dash wants to know what happened to good old fashioned tag team wrestling. He said wrestling has gone because they're in the world of sport as entertainment. Elias interrupts because you know what? They were kind of doing a shoot promo there. And you know what? It was actually entertaining. And then Elias ruined it with a song. Um. Talking about how they should go away. He's just they need to make a huge transformation. They are probably going away in a few months anyway. Uh, and then, yeah, that was it. It started out strong and then died off with Elias. Four out of ten. Uh, then Braun Strowman is in the back. Sammy sh shows up and says, I'm not here to recruit you. I got you a secret sound. I want to know what you want. Sammy thought about mittens to grab these hands. Braun asked, why does Sammy see doing this since he's been running down the holiday for the last few months? Cesaro and Nakamura show up and says it's a problem. Sammy's like, no, I'm trying to do a nice thing and give someone a guess. Braun's like, I want to shot the Intercontinental Championship. Sammy said, that's a great idea, but Nakamura's in a tag match tonight against the New Day. He will check his list and he will check it twice. 
6.5 out of 10. Quite entertaining. I enjoyed that, especially with uh, Braun playing along with a bit of the comedy stuff and then the two goons showing up. And it's just like, no, 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 don't attack him. It was funny. Uh, then Carmella versus Sonya Deville. Carmella with uh, a flatliner and Dakota Silence, and Sonya taps out. 2 out of 10. 5. 2 out of 5. Yeah. That's a Carmella got a win. Uh, which is quite good. Definitely good that they got a win. We then go to Sheamus. Talks about what happened on SmackDown since he was gone. The brand has become soft and sad. It's become small. Things will change because the Celtic Warrior is back and he's ready to fight for the soul of SmackDown. Eight out, eight, 9 out of 10. Sheamus. Amazing. I like it. Very, very, very good. Uh, then we go to Big E and Kofi Kingston versus Cesaro and Nakamura. Um... Um, Kofi with an inside cradle for a three count. Uh, overall, the match was meh, 2.5 out of 5, fairly average. Uh, then Kofi versus. Uh, then after the match, uh, Big E and Kofi get attacked by Nakamura and Cesaro. Sami Zayn comes to the ring to stop Nakamura and Cesaro. Sami then joins in. Braun Strowman comes down, lays them all out. Yeah, fair point. Nice be- uh, post beat down attack. Uh, then Daniel is getting ready in the back. Miz stops by. Miz says he wants to thank Brian for saving him at TLC. Daniel's like, I didn't do it for you. I did it for myself. Daniel says, I'm sorry for what Bray did to your family. Uh, Daniel and Miz try to show how much they hate each other. Miz said they will work together against Baron and Dolph tonight. But they, but then he's going after Bray's title. 7 out of 10. I like these two. Definitely got very good work chemistry together. Very, very good. Then Bailey versus Dana Brooke. Um, Bailey with the snake eyes. Headlock driver for the three count. Mm, match was near. Two out of five. Uh, after the match, Bailey and Sasha have some work for Dana. And Lacey Evans um, comes down. Um, they escape before Lacey gets there. Lacey's like, Sasha... You're just a legit bully with a big mouth and no backbone. I was raised to never let a bully win, so I'm challenging you right now. I'll make Sasha a legit loser. Um, six out of ten. Fairly good little promo thing there. I enjoyed that. Um, Sasha uh, was uh, beating up Lacey on the outside in front of Lacey's husband and uh, daughter. They get a double count out. They continue the beat down after, but Lacey manages to get the upper hand in the end. So overall, not bad. Not bad. I mean, they're, they're obviously going kind of like a Sasha and Lacey feud. and Yeah, okay. Uh, the match itself, not really going to rate. It's just kind of set up for that beat down attack, to be fair. We then go to our main event of the evening. Daniel Bryan and The Miz versus King... Corbin and Dolph Ziggler. Uh, Miz and Daniel Bryan was arguing who will start the match, but while they were doing that, Corbin and Ziggler took control. We had like a little bit of back and forth match. Um, Miz then locks in the figure four leg lock. Bryan with running knees to stop Corbin, and Ziggler taps out. Um, overall, the match was. <sighs> 1.75 out of 5. Uh, then we're told that Miz, Daniel Bryan and Baron Corbin will be in a number one contendership match next week. All three of them in the ring. Lights go down and we hear Bray laughing. And that's how we end the show. Overall, <laughs> it wasn't the best. Best Smackdown of all time. It wasn't even that good. I, I don't know. I'm trying to think. What do we honestly think of this week's Smackdown? Uh, no, I'm trying to think. Um, four out of ten, yeah. I think it was slightly worse than Smack uh, Raw. Is that harsh? Because we did have a good a couple of ends. You know, I'm gonna give it a 5.5 out of ten, slightly above Raw, I think, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, but yeah, that was. I think the... No, we've got another Smackdown on the 27th. I say, what is the last show of the year? Yeah, I think that Smackdown is... No, I know we have a Monday Night Raw on the 30th, which is the last show of the year. 
Great, we're ending this the end of the year on a freaking Monday Night Raw. Fantastic. But yeah, uh, that has been my review of Friday Night Smackdown. I do really hope you've enjoyed this review. If you have, please smash that like button, share and subscribe, and I shall catch you all later. Bye!